Well, thank you so much for coming out tonight. It's 108 degrees or whatever it was out there. I, I just, I'm not sure I would have. But I, I really appreciate the interest in the company. I do want to start off this year, usually where I end up, I really want to, I kind of feel it as though it's appropriate after a year like this that we thank you for letting us serve you and for your continued support of MKC. While we are fortunate to have a group of employees working for us who sometimes make it appear pretty easy, each year provides us with its own unique set of challenges and opportunities. And again, this year, you know, it was no exception. We started last summer with a fair wheat crop overall. We followed that up with a complete disaster of a fall crop over much of our footprint. With the exception kind of being maybe right up in this geography, that weather event caused us to make some contingency plans in anticipation of possible dry conditions throughout the year. Well, thankfully, we had a good growing conditions that allowed for an awfully good wheat crop. And it's too early to say about the fall crop. I won't. We all know that we live in Kansas. We're three weeks away from a drought every day. Um, we, we could use some rain, and thankfully, we're getting a little bit of it. So we need some more, though. What we were allowed to do this past fiscal year, thanks to the storage that we built, over the past few years, and a very understanding banker who listened intently to our strategy was to take advantage of what the market allowed us to capture. Now, our people spend a lot of time preaching this type of strategy to you, so basically we really just followed our own advice. This truly is the cooperative system and the cooperative spirit working exactly like it was intended by the people who founded this cooperative some 47 years ago. Our employees work with many of you on a regular basis to ensure that you have every opportunity to take advantage of purchase your inputs at the right time. I didn't say the right price, at the right time. And to buy the right kind of crop insurance for your plan, they can help you use and, and, and acquire input financing when and where it serves you best. We have employees who use precision technology to place the right nutrients and the right seed on the right acre, essentially to help you manage your risk in all areas of crop production. And at the same time, we've helped many of you develop marketing plans in order to capture a projected and a planned return on your investment. Now to the greatest reward of cooperative ownership and participation, after you've purchased your inputs at what we believe is a good value and received what we think is a very competitive price on your grain when it was marketing, marketed, acting on your behalf, we can go to our customers and our end users and get the best deal that we can for you. And anything we capture over and above the reinvestment that was discussed earlier, anything over and above that is returned to you in the form of patronage. Now this year, it happened to be about 25 cents a bushel, but we've averaged over 15 cents a bushel the past five years. A fertilizer purchase this year returned you close to $30 a ton, and all of our other offerings yielded very similar returns. And occasionally, we will get people who ask, why on earth does the cooperative need to make so much money? Well, I will tell you, and I generally say, it certainly doesn't feel like a lot of money when you're in making investments like we are. When we're trying to renew and replace all of our assets, it, it doesn't feel like it's that much money. So if you really think about it, though, for a while, we, MKC, is actually an aggregation of a whole bunch of smaller co-ops and ag businesses that, if left run as individuals and ran very well, and nothing in the environment changed, and it truly was like it used to be, each of them could probably be making $100,000, $300,000, $300, which used to be considered pretty good. I can remember those days. And it may add up to three, four million million, $4 million a year. So it's probably safe to say, we believe, that any savings that we generate over that three or $4 million a year is generally likely generated from growth or aggregation or scale or size, whatever you want to call it. Now, I will tell you, and, and, and as everybody in the audience knows, bigger is not always better. There are inherent disadvantages that come with size. What we have discovered, however, is that our growth has provided us and you with significant advantages in many areas. Whether it's discovering more markets for your grain or helping forecast and position inputs for future use or being able to attract and retain some of the best and brightest employees, and then having enough scale and to allow them to specialize in what they enjoy and what they do best every day. Programs like the Soybean Revenue Assurance Program that last year brought close to $3 million right into the pockets of our members. 
We were the only one in the nation to have that program. Programs like our tissue sampling program or having access to top shelf presenters or to provide us with educational programs, getting vendors to allow us the first look at the latest technology coming out and lenders coming to us and offering better advantages and offering better financing plans to help us and help us execute our strategy better. These are all a result of our growth. All of these things that we believe are associated with our growth efforts have allowed us to perform at a plane that puts additional capital and resources directly into you members' hands. Now, I believe the challenge that we face, kind of as CJ pointed out, I think one of the challenges that MKC faces today, as silly as it may sound, is remaining relevant. The bar for relevance in our industry continues to go up, has been pointed out. Now, that's not to say that you can't hunker down and remain a very successful small company, possibly for a very long time. However, what you're most likely going to give up is our access to what I described earlier, the advantages that we've discovered and the benefits that we're able to push directly into the hands of our member owners and the pocketbooks of our member owners. More and more people in our area and the edges of our area are discovering and utilizing those advantages every day. In fact, over the past five years, we've added over 100 new members each year. There are a number of us at this company who believe that this company should prepare for multiple growth opportunities over the next few years, not driven so much by our desire to be larger and not because other cooperatives' performance won't be up to par. We believe it's going to be because producers or board members and those same producers recognize the value in sharing that and deciding that joining forces is probably the right approach. This will cause successful companies finally to join with other successful companies for the good of all member owners. And if it truly is about the benefit of the producer, it really does only make sense. Another reason, as was pointed out earlier, that you'll see co-ops banding together is simply due to the ever-increasing volatility in the world today. Every market that we're in continues to see unprecedented volatility. We thought just a few short years ago a swing of 20 or 30 percent of the value of a commodity was a big deal. Today, prices can increase or decrease by some 200 percent, maybe in a few months. And at the same time that you're trying to manage your price risk, the risk of supply is becoming a bigger and bigger issue. Nobody wants to own the last ton. Who would have ever believed a few years ago that the USA today would be a net exporter of energy? And it wasn't but about five years ago that most people believed that we'd never manufacture nitrogen fertilizer in the good old US of A today. Well, all that, at that time, our natural gas was costing about 8 or $9 a gallon. Gas that today is selling for two something. They're burning it off in North Dakota in places, I know, and, and, and it's just crazy, isn't it? But as a good friend of mine says, this too shall pass. So we all know that turbulence is inevitable, but misery, you know, now that's optional. The value of our collective leadership and vision is in the anticipation of our future customers' needs. And the development of plans and the preparation for what we believe is coming down the road. Generally, as you know, the time to perform, when the time to perform is here, the time to prepare has already passed. I know you hear and probably have heard about a lot of projects that we're working on or preparing for. So, and I will say that some of what you've heard, possibly not all of it, is probably even true. So... <laughs> We continue to do a very comprehensive assessment of what we believe you will need to be successful in the future. This past fiscal year, as Danny pointed out, we placed about eight and a half million dollars, in fact, in, in, into service. Everything from bins to bin repair and legs, trucks, trailers, spray rigs, bulk storage, computer software, just a whole host of upgrades. The list goes on and on. But it's done in an effort to keep pace with you. Yes, we even bought some new white trucks. So I, I, I'll probably hear about that, too. All of this is driven, like I said, to keep up the pace with your productivity. In fact, that, that pro increase in productivity of yours has been over 300% since this co-op was formed. Now, that's just remarkable when you think about that. Whether we're talking about how fast you can get grain to the elevators or your ability, how quick you can get a crop in the ground, the speed at which you guys operate today just continues to amaze me. 
Now, there's a lot of reasons that we take our time when performing analysis on these projects. The primary one, though, is that given the illiquidity of these projects, the qualitative analysis, understanding if it's the right design and why we're doing it is just as critical as the quantitative analysis. Marketplace dynamics continue to shift. It's critical in our analysis to make sure that our projects not only reflect our anticipation of your future needs, but additionally provide us with the financial springboard to do the next one. So, in this International Year of the Co-op, when our theme is continuing our legacy, remember that legacy does not imply that you do things the same way that you've always done them. Legacy is something transmitted by or received from an ancestor or a predecessor or received from the past. I can only hope that when we hand off what we built, it will be something that the recipient will be very proud to take advantage of. That, my friends, is our charge, to make sure this company, your co-op, is prepared to serve the producers of the future, as well as those who have had the vision in the past that delivered us to this point. So I want to personally thank the board and my fellow employee group for their dedication to MKC. This group works well together. Now, that doesn't mean like that we don't argue like any other family at time, and we spend more time together with, as a group than most we do with our families, usually, sadly. But you ought to be in a room when we start our capital um, expenditure budget decisions. It normally starts, as Danny said, we spend eight and a half million or so last year, and it generally starts out somewhere about 40 to 50 million dollars. And then we start discussing and we do our analysis from that point. But what does happen is everybody gets to speak their mind. Everybody gets listened to with respect to project priority. Then we go through a similar process once we get to the board of directors because they want to know the process that we went through. But when we do make a decision and it is reached, it is done with you and our desire to make you more successful in mind. I pretty much live by the motto, keep it simple. I try to just chase one rabbit at a time. So. So the employee group at the direction of the board every day hits the ground running with one thing in mind. Let's help the people that do business with us be more successful. So our interest, what we have discovered, is that our interest is truly fulfilled when our growers are successful. It's, it's really simple stuff. So it is very, very apparent to our organization when we focus on your success that your cooperative is successful as well. So thank you very much for coming out on this warm evening. Um, thank you for helping us have another very successful year. Um, we do appreciate your support. Thank you very much.